Now, before we start using NGRX in our Angular application, in this lecture, let's first understand the three main building blocks of NGRX state management system, and that is store, action, and reducer. So in this lecture, we are going to have a conceptual overview of what a store, an action, and a reducer is in NGRX, and then we will implement them in our next lecture. So as we have learned before, NGRX is a reactive state management library for Angular applications. And it is heavily inspired by Redux and it uses the concept of single immutable state tree to manage application data. And the three core building blocks of NGRX state management system are store, actions and reducers. And we are going to talk about each of them one by one in this lecture. And let's start with store. So a store is the single source of truth of your application state. Now, what do we mean by that? So, for example, in our Angular application, we can have a state for managing products. So, for example, in this product state, we will have an array of all the products and we will have a single product object. So, that single product object will store the information about the selected product. In the same way, in the user state, we can have a list of all the users as well as we can also have a state for storing the currently logged in user. Then we can have order state, which is going to store order related data. And we can have cart state, which is going to store cart related data. And all these states together, they will create a store. So a store is going to keep all the state of the application in a single place. And whenever we want to access a state data, we can access it directly from the store. And that's why we say that a store is the single source of truth for your application state. It holds the entire immutable state tree of your application. And you can think of it like a central database where all your application's data resides. Now let's talk about the key characteristics of a store. So first of all, there can only be one store in an NGRX application. You cannot have multiple stores. And the state within the store is never directly modified. Instead, new states are created. So remember that in the store, a state is never modified. It is not changed. Instead, a new state gets created and the data from that new state is used by the Angular application. And also, whenever the state changes, the store it exposes an observable. Basically, it emits an observable. And wherever we want to use the data from the store, there we need to subscribe to that observable. So remember, the store is going to emit an observable with the current state data. And wherever we want to use that data, in whichever component we want to use the state from the store, there we need to subscribe to that observable which this store is going to emit. I hope this point is clear. So here we have an example of a state, how a state will look like. So for example, here we are creating a product state. We are calling it as initial state. And for this, we are specifying a type. The type is product state. This type is basically an interface where we are specifying what properties do we want in this state. And based on that, we can create the properties and we can assign it with some initial value. So here we are creating an initial state where we have two properties, products and product. And they're also initialized with some initial value. So this is a state. And to access the properties from this state, this state should be added to the store. And we will see how we can do that in our next lecture. Now, let's talk about action. So Actions are basically plain JavaScript objects that describes unique events that happens in your application. And they are the only way to initiate a state change in NGRX store. Actions are basically messages that you send to the store to tell it that something has happened. You can think of an action like an event. So for example, let's say we have an add to cart button in the product page. And when that button is clicked, we want to add a product to the cart. Now, when the button is clicked, we are going to dispatch an action. Let's say 
we are going to call that action add to cart and whenever that action will be dispatched it will tell store that an action has been dispatched called add to cart and based on that the reducer is going to react we will talk about reducer in the coming slides but just remember that an action is nothing but an event in an ngrx application this event tells what has happened and based on that event the reducer reacts to that event now the key characteristics of an action is that every action should have a unique type so when we create an action for that action we specify a type we can say that we specify a name for that action and that name should be unique no two actions can have the same name no two actions can have the same type value also when we create an action for that action we can also specify the type of payload which that action is going to dispatch and this is an optional parameter also one thing which you need to remember is that the action type value so as i mentioned you can think of action type as the name for the action so the action type value should be as descriptive as possible to tell what event has occurred so for example if we are incrementing the counter value we can set the value of action type as increment if we are adding a product we can set the action name as add product and if we are deleting a user we can set the action type as delete user so this action type it is going to be a string value and that string value will be used as the name for that action now in order to create an action we need to use this create action method and to use this create action method we need to use an ngrx library which i'll show you in the next lecture but using this create action method we can create an action and it returns us an object so this create action method it is going to return us an object in that object we will have a type property whose value will be increment because while creating this action we are specifying the type as increment then here we are creating another action called decrement using this create action method and for that we are specifying the name we are specifying the type for that action as decrement and in the same way we are creating other actions like reset add product if you see when we are creating this add product using this create action function there we are specifying a type for that action we are calling it as add product then we are also specifying what type of data should be dispatched whenever this add product action will be dispatched whenever this add product event will happen what type of data we are going to pass with that event so to remember it you can say that an action is nothing but an event in ngrx okay in the same way whenever a user is deleted so for that we are creating an action called delete user and whenever we want to delete a user we are going to dispatch this delete user action and with that we also need to specify which user do we want to delete or maybe here we need to specify the id of the user whom we want to delete so while creating the action we are telling what will be the type of data we need to pass when this delete user action will be dispatched so this is action now let's move to reducers now reducers are the pure functions that take the current state from the store and it takes an action as an input so remember it takes the current state from the store and it also takes an action as an input and then it returns a new state and reducers are responsible for determining how the application state changes in the response to an action now the key features of a reducer is reducers are pure functions that means if we provide the same input like if we provide the same state and action they are always going to produce the same output also when we use reducers they do not have any side effects that means they don't modify external variables or perform any api calls or manipulate the dom the main thing which you need to remember about reducer is that reducer must not mutate the original state object so as we learned in the store whichever state we have we should not be modifying that state instead 
we should be creating a new state with the updated value. So it is the job of the reducer to take care that it does not mutate the original state. Instead, it return a new state object with the desired changes. And this is typically achieved with the use of spread operator. And that we will see in our next lecture. So here is how a reducer will look like. Now remember that whenever we create a reducer, it always gets a state. So in this case, we are creating a counter reducer. Now to this counter reducer, we are passing initial state. And what is this initial state? It is this state which we are creating. In this state, we have this counter property which is initialized with the value 0. So while creating the reducer, we need to pass a state to it. Here we are passing this state to this create reducer. And then as the rest of the argument, we create reducer functions using this on method. So this on method takes two parameter. The first parameter is the action name. And the second parameter is the reducer function, which will react to that action. So whenever the increment action is dispatched, this callback function will be executed. In the same way, whenever the decrement action is dispatched, this callback function will be executed. And whenever the reset action is dispatched, this callback function will be executed. So a reducer basically reacts to an action. And how does it react to an action? By updating a new state. Now, which state it updates? It updates the state which we are passing to it as the first argument. So here remember for this state parameter, we are always going to receive the current state value for this state because we are passing this state as the first argument. This initial state is nothing but this object. So whatever is the current state of this object that will be passed to this state parameter. And on that we are updating the current value. So this state here, it is going to receive this object. On that object, we will have a counter property. So here I have missed to add that. But here, in order to access this counter property, we will have to say state.counter because this state will be assigned with this object. Okay, so here it should be state.counter plus one because we wanted to add one whenever the increment action is dispatched to this counter property. Same thing we want to do for decrement. So here also it should be state.counter minus one. And here also it should be state.counter equals zero. So here I have some mistake in this slide, but I'll rectify it in my next lecture. All right. So in this lecture, we had a high level overview of what a store, an action, and a reducer is. Now let's also quickly see how these three are linked together. So here I have a store, I have an action and I have a reducer. Now in this store, if you see, currently we have a state which we are calling it as counter. So this counter is storing an object. This object is nothing but the state. And in that state, we have a counter property which is initialized with the value zero. And we have an action. We have created three actions, increment, decrement and reset. And we also have a reducer where for now I am only creating a reducer method for increment action. Okay. Now we also have two components, counter value component, where I have a counter property, which is set with the value zero. And I also have the counter button component where I have three buttons, increment, decrement, and reset. Now let's say in this counter button component, when the increment button is clicked, I want the value of this counter state to change to one. When it is clicked again, I want this counter state to change to two and so on. And whenever the value of this counter state changes, inside this counter value component, I'm going to subscribe to the observable which this store is going to return. So we have learned that a store is going to return us an observable. So inside this counter value component, I'm going to subscribe to that observable. And whenever the state inside this store will change, this component will be notified about that. And in that component, I am using the value of this counter property of this state. So currently the value of this counter property of this state is zero. So that's why inside this counter value component, the value of this counter property is set to zero. 
now let's say in the counter button component the increment button is clicked when this button is clicked i am dispatching an action called increment so an increment event has happened the increment action has been dispatched and as soon as this increment action is dispatched in this reducer using this on method we are listening for that increment action to happen so as soon as the increment event has happened that means the increment action has been dispatched the reducer will know about it now what this reducer will do then it is going to execute this reducer function which we are passing as the second argument to this on method now remember that in the store a state is always mapped with a reducer here we have a counter state and we have let's say counter reducer so a state will always be mapped to a reducer so what reducer does is it gets the current state since this reducer it is mapped to this counter state it is going to get the current counter state okay based on that it is going to update that state now here since the increment button is clicked we want to increment the value of this counter property by one so inside this reducer function if you see what we are doing first we are extracting all the properties from the state so this state property it is going to receive this object from that object we are extracting all the properties using the spread operator currently we have only one property here so that property will be extracted and then we are overriding the value of that counter property so you see again i am creating the counter property in that case what it will do is it will override the value of the counter property from this state object and what i am doing there i am adding one to the current counter value now what this reducer is going to do is here it is going to create a new state you see it is creating a new object so this new object will be the new state and that state will be passed to the store so the original state has not been modified instead the reducer has created a new state where the counter value has incremented by one and now this new state will be used by the angular application so now since the state has changed since a new state has been created and since this counter value component has subscribed to this store this counter value component will be notified about that and inside this counter value component we need to write the logic to set the value of this counter property equal to the value of this new counter state so in the counter value component also the value of the counter property will change to 1 so i hope this flow is clear to you if not in the next lecture we are going to implement the same thing practically this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day